In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create neomorphic shapes using Canva. Well, this will help you to elevate your design skills to the next level, and you can use these images to either create websites or any of your web design projects, and also it can be used to create reporting dashboards. So without any further ado, let's jump straight into it. Welcome back, my name is Gurpreet and if this is the very first time you are visiting my channel then please make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you stay up to date with all of my videos. So first of all we need to open Canva desktop app. You can also use Canva cloud app if you need to but for this tutorial I'll be using Canva desktop app. So first of all we will need to create a new document so you can create either a custom size or you can create any of the standard document size which is already available in Canva. So in today's tutorial I will use custom size and I will use 800 by 800 pixels and create a new design. So once we have opened that you will see this particular window and here you can give the background color the way you want it. In today's tutorial I'll be using simple gray color or I can also change the color by adding the hexadecimal code here. So let's try a different one where I will say F3, F4, F7 as the color which I'll be using. So that's the color which I have selected here. Now I will go to the elements and select a different shape. So simply I can go to shapes, you can type in shapes here as well. And once you do that, you will see all the different shapes. And here I will use rounded rectangle or rounded square shape and I will use this as our starting point where I will change the color of this particular shape and with the background color you can select whichever you want so in this case we have selected the one f3 f4 f7 as a hexadecimal code you can select whichever you want in this case if you want to keep different colors you can play around with it but for this tutorial I'll be using this gray shade and for our rounded square shape, this can be used as a button or whatever you want to use it for in your web design. So let's go into the colors and here I would like to use a gradient color. So we can choose different gradients from here. Let's say this color, but I don't want the color selected in this one, right? So I want to change the color. So I will go to the new color selection and instead of selecting solid color, by default it selected gradient. But for example, if I didn't go that way and I go to the colors and I have selected plain purple color, but I don't want, I want a gradient, so I will go add new color. So it will give you a solid color selection here. But then we can choose the gradient color and we can <coughs> select the different colors from here. So here I want white color on the right hand side and on the left hand side I want a shade of gray so I can change it if you know the hexadecimal code so in this case I am using E D double E F3 so once I use that you will see it here a slight variation of gray and white gradient so once that is created that's our top element right so we need to create multiple layers so what I will do I will duplicate this page and I will now change the color from gradient to standard gray color. So why I am doing this? So in order to give that 3D effect here that this button is popping out of the background, we need to create multiple layers with different shadows. So this is the first one layer which is in gray color and we will be using this as a drop shadow on the right bottom corner. So what I will do I will simply go to share and download this particular page and I will select page number two and I will select the transparent background. So once I download that, you can give the name. So I will say light gray button and we'll save that. And I will duplicate this page again to create the third layer, which is page three, third layer and here I would like to change the background color to white. 
So once the white color is selected here, I will go again to share. I will download it and I will select the page number three and I will select the transparent background and I will download it and we will give the name white square and I will download this and save it. So now we will go back to our page number one where we are trying to create the neomorphic image. So then I will open the folder where I have created white square and light gray button. I will drag it into Canva window and it will start loading these images here. So now the magic will happen once we start bringing those images. So let's see, let's bring the gray image first <clears throat> and here I will bring it, drag it at the top left corner and I will make sure that the entire page is selected here and then I will adjust the position so it layers on top of the previous image and I will go to position and I will change the x and y axis so I will make it to let's say 10 pixels and 10 pixels as x and y axis and I will do it that way and I will move this image backwards and you will see the really nice image at the background is created now we have selected that particular image and we will go to edit photo and we will go to blur effect and once we go to the blur effect you can adjust and see how the image is changing right so we want <clears throat> something around 50 will look good yeah so that looks better you can adjust again according to your requirement if you really want dark drop shadow you can keep the intensity as minimum as you want but in this particular example i want somewhere around 50 so i will keep it this way so now that we have selected this image with a drop shadow on the right bottom we want something at the top left corner as well to give that popping effect so for that we need to bring this white image so i will click on that and again we'll adjust the image size and you can see it's at the top of previous two layers we can simply go here and see this is at the top we don't want it at the top so we can either drag and drop so in this case i will just bring it at the bottom here <coughs> or e1 one layer below right and here i want to move the location of x and y axis so i will select minus 10 and minus 10 so once we do that it is at the back and we will again do the blur effect here and you will see the position is not right in this case so i will bring it up and you will see that really nice bright white color is coming so showing the effect of 3d image that this button is popping up so again i will go to edit photo and blur effect and you can see it is really dark right now because we have reduced the intensity to 11 but you can adjust it so here i will keep it again around 50 and with the position you can adjust if you don't want too much white at the back you can reduce it to let's say minus 8 and minus 8 here and it will give you nice and subtle effect of neomorphism shapes so you can see here it looks like it's beautiful isn't it so we can use these kind of shapes in any of our graphic designs or dashboard creating or even in websites for creating different buttons i hope you guys like this session and if you have any questions please feel free to drop me a message in the section below thank you see you next time